Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to trap form error messages so we can give our users more user-friendly notifications in our Microsoft Access databases. Something like this, right? The changes you requested to the table were not successful because they would create duplicate values in the index primary key relationship. What? What does that even mean? Or some of them are just error 3222. No idea what that is. So we're gonna give them nice friendly ones like error. Someone else already has this phone number assigned to them. And then they understand what they did. Today's question comes from Elias in Hawthorne, New Jersey, one of my platinum members. Elias says, how can I make my Microsoft Access forms show easy to understand error messages instead of those confusing default ones that come up? I want my database users to know what went wrong without getting scared off by techie jargon. I love that, techie jargon. <laughs> Do you have any tips or methods to help me handle and customize these error messages in forms? Well, yes, of course. There's lots of things you can do. In fact, I've already put together a couple of other videos showing different methods you could deal with this. For example, you could use a before update event for each field and just check it and make sure. But then you got to de-look it up and see if it's in the table already. And this can get a little cumbersome. And then in this video, I show another technique very similar to before update where you don't have to index the field and you can still check and you can warn the user if it's in there, but allow it anyways. So that's another option for you. But what we're going to do today is a little bit different. We're going to trap the forms on error event. And then we can look and see what error was it. And we can even check what field the user's in and then give them the error message that's appropriate. But before we get started, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, you should know some basic VBA. And if you haven't done any VBA programming before, go watch this video. It'll get you started in about 20 minutes. And you should know how to use if, then, else, else, if, and if blocks. <laughs> go watch this video if you don't know what that is. These are free videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and then come on back. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can get a copy off my website if you want to, as well as the video where I show how this is built. So in here, I got a customer form and customers have phone numbers. Let's say you want to keep phone number unique to each customer. No customer, no two customers can have the same phone number. So let's go ahead and index that. Let's go to the customer table, right click design view. And let's find phone number and we're going to set this to indexed. Yes, no duplicates. And I just double clicked on that by accident. All right. So yes, no duplicates. That means no two phone numbers can be the same. Let's save it, close it. And of course, if you already have data in there that violates that rule, you'll get a warning message. So make sure you don't have those already. Oh, and if you don't know what indexing is, go watch this video. Basically, it's a method for preventing duplicate values, plus a lot of other stuff that I uh, go over in this video. All right, so now if I come in here and let's just copy this phone number and I'll go to the next record. Oh, oh, look, I wanted to bring up this too. Look at this. This is something new that Windows 11 is doing. It's this clipboard thing. This isn't part of Access. This is part of Windows 11. It saw that I copied a phone number and it wants me to do stuff, Teams or whatever. No, I'm turning this off right now. Go to this little guy here. That's going to bring up your clipboard settings. There's some good stuff in here too. For example, clipboard history. I love this. You press Windows key V and you can see the last bunch of stuff that you copied. But I hate this clipboard suggestions. Uh, it goes on for dates, times, phone numbers. No, go away. Goodbye. All right, where was I? Copy that and let's go to a new record and just paste it in there. And now if I try to go to a new record again, you get this big long thing. All right, the changes. And your, your end user is going to look at this and go, what? what is, I have no idea. And then they're going to call you and you got to explain it to them. So it'd be easier if the database could just explain it to them by itself, right? So I'm gonna hit escape, get rid of that change. Now you could put a, a before update event in the phone number field or even in the form and check that yourself, but there's an easier way. Let's go and trap this error in the forms on error event. So bring up the forms properties, double click there, go to the events tab and find on error right there. This will be the event that runs anytime any error is thrown by this form, okay? Let's dot, dot, dot. That'll bring us into our code builder. All right, here it is. Form error, we get data error and a response. Basically, it's gonna tell you what the error number is and how do you want a respond tool. We'll talk about these in just a minute. All right, but let's come in here and just message box, hi. That's all I wanna do right now. All right, save that. Let's come back here. Let's close it, close it, 
open it. Let's do the same thing again. Copy this phone number, paste it in here, and then try to go to a new record. And oh, there's my hi. Because the error event ran and Access is saying, oh, you wanted me to say hi? If an error run, oh, okay, hi. But you still get the error message. All right. So you can give the user a custom message, but you're going to see that one. Now, I don't want to see the built-in error message. So we're going to turn that off. So we're going to come in here and we're going to say response equals AC data error continue. Type it in all lowercase and then press enter. And you should see it camel case like that with the capital D, capital E. If you don't, then you typed it in wrong. Yeah, there's no IntelliSense for this. You just got to know what it is. All right. That's going to be the response. It's going to go back to the form. And it's basically going to tell the form, hey, I don't want to see your built-in default error message. And if I come back here and do it again, bing, I get my hi, but I don't get the system error message. Okay, all right, that's a step. Now, it'd be nice if I knew exactly what error was thrown, right? What, what is the problem? What, what's going on here? Well, each error has a number, every type of error. All right, and a duplicate index value is error 3022. How do I know that? Well, we can have message box tell us what the error number is, right? We can say message box, uh, an error, well, I'm gonna put this in here, an error has occurred, and then message box that data error, okay? Save it, oh, and there it is. I hit save and, and initially refresh this guy. There it is, 3022. There's a bunch of different errors that forms can throw. If you wanna know what the number for it is, just do what I did and just message box it, it'll tell you, okay? Now that we know what the error is, we can set up a special use case for it. So we can come in here and say, if data error equals 3022, right? That's a duplicate index value. We, we know what that is, right? Oh, then, forgot my then. Then put a custom message in here, right? Now at this point, we just know that there's some kind of duplicate index in here. So we'll just give them a generic message still, message box, error, right? You have entered a duplicate value. That's all, they, that's all we know for sure right now, right? And then here we'll go else, if it's anything else, we'll just message box the error number. And that'll be useful for you later because then your user's gonna call you and say, hey, I got an error has occurred 4022, what's that? Well, then you can look it up and figure out what it is and then you can adjust this. All right, so if I save this now, there we go. You've entered a duplicate value. That's the same thing as me coming back in here and doing this. Okay. When you save the code, it, re it reloads the form. Okay, now, taking it even a step further, it'd be nice if we knew what field the user was in because when we can tell them an even better error message. So let's come in here. We know it's a 3022, right? Now I can say if screen.activecontrol.name equals what's the name of the field phone then i could be even more specific message box error someone else already has this phone number right otherwise we don't know what field you're in so give them that generic message see that screen.activecontrol.name i've got videos on this one too okay and you can also check the previous control Okay, let's save it again. And oh, look at that. See, someone else already has this phone number. It knows what field I'm in. And that's that. And you can keep adding different field names if you want to the 3022 errors. You can add different error numbers, all kinds of stuff. And that's pretty cool, right? That's easier than having to de look up the table to see if someone else already has that. And there's, I mean, there's a million ways to do everything in Access, but I think this is a pretty efficient way to handle errors on a form level. If you want to learn more about this stuff, I cover it in my Access Developer 41 class. We spend a, a good amount of time going over the different form on error event options. And this class also covers form zooming in and out. So you can zoom in and out, make your forms bigger and smaller. This is really cool stuff too. So I'll put a link to everything I mentioned in this video down below. And that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. 
Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels. Silver, Gold, Platinum, and Diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. 
You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.